Hello everyone, Golden Nova here. In Yu-Gi-Oh, a theme that's been around since the very beginning is the conflict between light and dark. And what I find outstanding about that is the franchise's stance on these two. Light isn't necessarily good, and dark isn't necessarily bad. From the beginning, Dark Magician was the ace monster of the main character, the person we're supposed to connect with as an audience. Blue Eyes White Dragon, on the other hand, is the monster of choice of the rival character, even if it's not strictly antagonistic. But it's when light and dark come together that they both realize their full potential, and it evokes a narrative where accepting both halves of oneself, the virtuous and the base, is a goal that everyone should strive for. Jaden reaches self-actualization once he's embraced Yubel, Chaz doesn't abandon his ambitions once he's lightened up to the Ojamas, but it does help him with empathizing and connecting with people. And one could argue that Yuya's whole character arc is a hyper-literal story about accepting different parts of yourself. And this isn't an anime-exclusive phenomenon either. Powerful decks of both attributes have existed, and some of the scariest decks combine the two. Lightsworn Zombies, Burning Abyss, Chaos as an archetype is built on this interaction, and it's a theme that recurs time and time again. And that time is upon us once again, as we take a look at a new theme consisting of devout holy warriors united in their shared belief to declare all-out war on a single dragony boy. The dogmatic order of Dragma... <laughs> uh, the dogmatic order of... <laughs> okay, okay, I, I can't do this. Hey, Delilah? Yo... I, I need help. Please say the thing. I can't go on unless I get this out of my systems. Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Drag my balls. <laughs> okay. All right, thank you. You can go back to torturing people who make fun of Amazonas or whatever you were doing. Oh, that's cute. You think they're people. Oh, and a quick reminder, please make sure to subscribe if you've enjoyed my videos. I know I forget to do that for some of the creators that I like, and it does really help me out. And to be honest, I like when good numbers go up. What can I say? I'm an RPG fanatic at heart. So what's the deal with Dragma? It seems like the archetype is focused on enabling a variety of effects that will either shred or restrict access to your extra deck while having a bit of a beatdown theme. Let's go over the monsters, look over their spell and trap support, and then take a peek at a few related cards that tie into the Dragma theme. First, we have three level 4 light spellcasters. All of them can't be destroyed by battle with monsters special summoned from the extra deck, and can be special summoned from the hand once per turn while a monster special summoned from the extra deck is on the board. Man, for a theme with all this anti-extra deck stuff, it sure is screaming for a rank 4 toolbox. Ecclesia has 1500 attack and defense, and when normal or special summoned, you can add any Dragma card from your deck to your hand, except another copy of itself, but you are locked out of the extra deck for the rest of the turn. Having a universal searcher for your theme is always exquisite, making every other card in your theme inherently better by virtue of being searchable. Theo has 1800 attack and 1500 defense, and they can target a monster special summoned from the extra deck, allowing Theo to gain 600 attack until the end of the turn, and if successful, the target loses 600 attack during that time as well. This means that Theo can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with any extra deck summoned monster with 3,000 or less attack. You know, provided you can target it. It also doesn't lock you out of your extra deck when using it, so not only is it a great in-theme way to out big chonkers, you can also splash it into a ton of decks as a free level 4 that goes smashy smash. Aiden has 1,000 attack and 1,800 defense, and if destroyed by battle or card effect while on the field, you can special summon any Dragma from your deck. Not much to say on this one. You don't have any way to self-destruct any of your cards in theme, but its float is specifically for the theme. You can't even smash it into an extra deck summoned monster to get someone else. It's technically another name for rank 4 spam builds, but if I'm being honest, unless something changes in the future, this is likely safe to skip. Then we have two big monsters that are level 8 instead of level 4. Fleur de Lis has 2500 attack and defense. During any main phase, as a quick effect, if a monster special summoned from the extra deck is on the field, you can special summon Fleer from your hand, and should you control another Dragma monster, you can blink the effect of one face-up monster on the field until the end of the turn without having to target. On top of that, the first time a Dragma monster attacks each turn, all Dragmas get their attack boosted by 500 points permanently. This is far and away the best card to search off of Ecclesia. If you can special summon her, 
then you can definitely summon this tall glass of metal and holy righteousness. And it turns on their effect veiler ability. It also turns the stat lines of Ecclesia and Theo from mediocre to amazing. Theo can punch even higher above their weight class, and Fleer plus Ecclesia is 5,000 damage on board by themselves. The deck technically has a bigger boss monster, but Fleur will get you through a lot more games more consistently. Maximus has 1500 attack and 3000 defense, and you can special summon them from your hand by banishing a Fusion, Synchro, Ixies, or Link monster from your graveyard. Also, during your main phase, you can send two monsters with different names from your extra deck to the graveyard to force your opponent to do the same, though they can send two of the same name if they want. However, activating this effect will lock you out of your extra deck for the rest of the turn as well. This is probably the most interesting effect out of the entire archetype. Previously, effects that have allowed you to dump cards from your extra deck to the graveyard have been either silly expensive in terms of life points, or locked to specific archetypes. But now, you have a way to dump two at a time that isn't technically restricted to a specific archetype, with a drawback that can technically be built and played around. I'm excited to see where Maximus goes, both within and without their usual teammates. And now we get to the big cheese. Tetradragmaton, the Heart of Dogma. Rocking 3200 attack and defense, this level 11 light spellcaster cannot be normal summoned or set, and must first be special summoned by its own effect. You need to target 4 cards in the graveyard, any combination of 4 Synchro, Fusion, Ixies, or Link monsters in either graveyard, you can summon Tetradragmaton from your hand, and then banish the targets. Also, if Tetradragmaton attacks, at the start of the damage step, if it attacks a special summoned monster, you lightning storm as many of your opponent's attack position monsters as possible, then burn them for 800 damage times the amount of Fusion, Synchro, Ixies, and Link monsters blown up by the effect. It packs a lot of firepower, but honestly, I'm still not sure if it's worth it. Battle tricks like that haven't been an effective payoff for forever, especially out of boss monsters. This may be a one of if your play sequences need the extra power or removal to guarantee an OTK, but otherwise, it doesn't advance your game plan and it doesn't interact effectively with your opponent. Alright, time for some support cards. Dogmatic Nation Dragma is a field spell that keeps your Dragma monsters from being targeted by the effects of monsters special summoned from the extra deck. Also, if a Dragma battles an opponent's monster, after damage calculation, you can destroy the opposing monster. Combined with the level 4's effects to keep them immune to battle destruction versus extra deck summoned monsters, this does give you a way to use attacking as removal, and that's pretty cool, especially since it doesn't have to be an extra deck summoned monster to trigger the destruction nor does the monster have to survive the battle. Lastly, if Nation is face-up in the field zone, and is destroyed in any way by your opponent, you can make both players send a card from their extra deck to the graveyard. Your opponent will likely always choose the least impactful card in their extra deck, but if space is tight, you'll usually make them get rid of something important anyway, and if you've built your deck around maximizing Maximus, you'll be happy with what you send regardless. Disciple of the Nadir is not a Dragma card, but it is a searcher for the theme. Get this. It's a normal spell that has you send a monster from your extra deck to the grave, then add a Dragma monster from your deck or grave to your hand, as long as its attack is less than or equal to the attack of the monster you sent from the extra deck. But this does lock you out of the extra deck for the rest of the turn. Notably, this can also search a specific non-Dragma card, Albus of the Nullius Filius, but we'll get to them in a bit. Dragma Punishment is pretty similar. It's a normal trap that has you targeting an opponent's face-up monster, then you send a monster from your extra deck with equal or higher attack to blow up your target. It's also similar in that it locks you out of your extra deck for the rest of the turn. It's some pretty sweet 1 for 1 removal, and if the card you send to the graveyard has an end phase trigger, you'll get to capitalize on it the moment your turn rolls around. Dragma Encounter is a normal trap that will either let you special summon a Dragma monster or Albus from your hand, or take any of those cards from your graveyard and either special summon it or add it to your hand. I can see this being a pretty tricky way to bypass some of your deck's restrictive effects. You can search with Ecclesia during your opponent's turn and still have access to your extra during yours, or throw out an Aiden and dare your opponent to attack into it. It's also pretty funny with Albus's effect, which we'll get into right now. Albus, the Nullius Filius, is a level 4 Dark Dragon with 1800 attack and 0 defense. If they're normal or special summoned, you can discard a card for cost, then fusion summon one fusion monster from your extra deck, using exclusively that Albus and monsters your opponent controls. So yeah, it's a mini Super Poly on legs. It's even dark for Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. And the comparisons don't stop there. 
Because of Encounter, you can quick effect this during your opponent's turn, making it some absolutely outstanding removal. Though outside that, it's a bit restrictive. Fusion monsters that can be made with generic Dark, Dragon, or Dark Dragons have some pretty narrow pairs, so it won't give you any broader reach than the Quick Play Fusion. At least, that's what I would have said if we didn't get a fantastic fusion monster to pair with them. Bastard the Ashen Dragon. Is now a good time to reiterate that this show isn't for anyone 13 or under? Anyway, Bastard the Ashen Dragon is a level 8 Dark Dragon with 2500 attack and 2000 defense. Its fusion materials are specifically Albus and any other monster with 2500 or more attack, which means Albus is a clean out to a lot of the game's biggest threats. On top of that, it gains 100 attack for every level that the fusion materials had, meaning he'll always be fusion summoned with at least 2900 attack. Also, during the turn it's fusion summoned, it's unaffected by the activated effects of monsters special summoned from the extra deck. So if you didn't use a monster with a particularly threatening quick effect as fusion material, it'll stick around long enough to deal with them. Lastly, during the end phase, if it was sent to the graveyard that turn, you can take any Dragma monster or Albus from your deck and either add it to your hand or special summon it. I really dig the play sequence this leads into. You can either summon Maximus to begin dumping cards from your extra deck, including, hey, another copy of Bastard. Yeah, I'm gonna have fun saying that as much as I want, by the way. Bastard, Bastard, Bastard. You can't demonetize me if you didn't monetize me in the first place. You can also just summon out another Albus to remove an opponent's monster by way of fusion. So now that we have all the cards laid out, what is it that we're looking to accomplish with this theme? Honestly, Tetra Dragmaton is not the kind of boss I'd want to build a deck around. But what the theme can do is enable sweet grave effects you'd have to work a lot harder to get otherwise. Let's go through a few cool interactions you can do. Enabling Firewall Dragon Dark Fluid is kind of a pain. But with this deck, you can pretty easily load up the grave with all the different monster types needed to accrue counters. You can even send Herald of the Arclight to get the Cybers Ritual you need for that fourth counter. And speaking of Herald, locking out the extra deck is not something new for Rituals. While Arclight won't be enabling Nader or Punishment, you can still send it to the grave with Maximus for the free search. Combine these with Incantation, and we may be looking at the next big Ritual enabling shell. But what can we send along with Herald using Maximus's effect? Cyframe Lord Omega is an outstanding choice to pair with anything, as you can shuffle both monsters sent from the extra deck back into it so you can keep repeating this effect turn after turn. Natis targets and destroys, both things that are becoming less and less desirable with removal, but it is basically free and can hit anything, so that's a huge plus. For more niche applications, Garden Rose Maiden can monster reborn any Dragon Synchro, enabling you to get second wins out of monsters like Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon and Naturia Barkeon. And on that note, sending Beast and Barkeon sets up a Miracle Synchro Fusion to get the almighty Naturia Exeterio. In fact, there are a lot of fusion synergies that this can enable, which is absolutely hilarious for the theme that will lock you out of fusion summoning if you try to use them. I've already seen some Shadal lists floating around that use the El Shadal Grave effects to recur the fusion spells, but especially Apcolone, which can actually search those spells if you don't already have access to them. Not only can you get El Shadal Fusion to kind of bypass the extra deck lock, you can also get the soon to be released Shadal Rook for some potential removal as well. Chimera Flacia can also search a wide breadth of cards, though it is on a delayed trigger. But there are a ton of different decks with their own fusions that's a lot easier to get a hold of now. Whether you want to grab the board breaking super polymerization, or the Cyberload Fusion for follow up plays, this Fanged Flora has your back. Speaking of Zane's favorite archetype, Cyber Eternity Dragon can also be generic fusion support. By banishing it from the grave, fusions can't be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects for the turn, so you don't have to worry about eating infinite impermanences or nightmare unicorns. But what if you just want to go for a game? Well, Luna Light Saber Dancer has you covered. You can banish it from your grave, except the turn it was sent to the grave, to boost a fusion monster's attack by 3000 until the end of the turn. And if you're locked out of your extra deck, it doesn't much matter that you'd have to wait a turn anyway. Lunalite itself doesn't have much of a problem setting this effect up, but if you're another fusion deck that wants to add a little extra oomph to your game ending pushes, Saber Dancer should be your go-to. So yeah, there are a ton of angles you can take the deck if you're looking to abuse extra deck monster grave effects. It's not a super cohesive strategy on its own, at least with the current support, but I wouldn't be surprised to see a number of decks splashing Dragma for their unique effects, especially ritual decks. But now I want to hear what you all think. Is there an angle to these pious pummelers that I've overlooked? Personally, 
I plan on splashing Albus into a lot of decks as a way to weaponize my normal summon. Let me know in the comments, and if you enjoyed, please make sure to like and subscribe. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye